Yes. Uh, I'm very happy to participate in the honor they give you, Alex. And it makes me very happy to, to be part of it. Okay, I'm going to move to the paper. What this paper offers is something very ambitious, in a sense, and very thought-provoking. Because it suggests that we should measure the cost of living in a different way. And to take into account the fact that people are utility maximizing over time and not only within the same period of time. And as a result, we should take into account the uh, prices that are expected in the future and also uh, asset prices and uh, similar other variables that are not included in the current CPI. Now, I think that in a sense, Israel is one of the most appropriate places to present such a paper because we have really a huge experience in indexation of all sorts. It started, I think, in the times of the Second World War under the British rule in the Middle East. And uh, since they used to f finance the war by some kind of slight inflation, uh, I think wages and even uh, pension funds started to be indexed since then. So, so in a sense for us, it seems almost natural to think about indexing uh, retirement accounts. It's, we don't know other way to do it. So that, 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 that's one good thing. Now, this is a very ambitious paper, and uh, I think that the last slide of uh, Ricardo should be taken seriously. We should not come to it with our preconditions and pre-opinions, form our opinions, but rather look at it in a, in a kind of an open way. And in a sense, my discussion will follow my own, it, it won't be very structured, it will follow kind of my association thinking about what there is in the paper. So I'm first going to present my first puzzle that I got. First of all, what's the basic idea? The basic idea is to take an individual who retires in some period, and you take the intertemporal uh, 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 welfare, and you want to ask yourself, what is the uh, compensation pie that will leave the intertemporal uh, welfare unchanged? So the formula has been presented before, and it's very uh, straightforward in a sense. But then I, I, I got puzzled by a number of issues. The first of all was the first experiment that you take, which is simply taking all prices as known ahead of time, and you have an annuity that gives you a, a fixed amount of money. And then I was puzzled by the following thought. If people know prices ahead of time, and they maximize their utility why should we compensate them for changes in prices that are fully anticipated? So I read Section 3.1 again thought thoroughly, and I realized that that's because you force the consumer to consume a fixed nominal sum each period. Now, but that should not always be the case when we have an annuity, because, for example, even if we buy an annuity in the first period, and the annuity pays an interest rate that already compensates for inflation, let's say the nominal interest rate compensates for inflation, so I can every period devote only what we roughly call the real interest rate for consumption, put the compensation for inflation in increasing the amount of annuity, and therefore smooth my consumption in a better way, and in that sense I will not need a, a, a compensation to begin with. Now that led me to think further and think about something that should be taken care of in the paper, and that's the following issue. Uh, I think that's the experiment I kind of just talked about. So, but what I think that you missed in, in, in the structure of the model is the following thing. You have separate statistical processes for real prices of goods and a separate statistical process for the prices of assets. But we know that a lot of assets take into consideration anticipations of future prices. Like the interest rate, the nominal interest rate, includes anticipations of future inflations. Now, if that is taken into account, a lot of the results that you get are going to be mitigated, I think. Because you have a lot of, persi the persistence in prices have a lot of effect on, on the DPI. But we know even from Hall's paper that price, price changes that are persistent and therefore anticipated should the consumer already protect it, it herself or himself against these future changes by purchasing the right types of assets. 
So that's, that's, that's a question that should be uh, uh, dealt with. What is, we should add another specification to the, to the stochastic process that connects anticipated changes in, real, in goods prices to changes in, to, the, to the asset prices, and that will mitigate to some extent the effect of uh, future, at least anticipated prices. Now then I thought about another issue which, which bothered me when I read the paper. And I'll start by quoting you. But this is from the abstract. A consumer wishes to protect her retirement account from the risk of price changes. That's the basic motivation for the whole exercise, in a sense. But then I stop and ask myself, OK, well, why should I do it only once? If you look at the initial type of optimization, at period t or t plus 1, we get a, a one-time compensation pi, and that's it. But if prices have an, effect, an element that is not only anticipated ahead of time, but there are price shocks and price surprises every period, then I would ask myself, OK, but why wouldn't I get some protection every period anew? Like this period, I'll get some, some indexation. Next period, I get a new indexation. And, you, and that's where I come to the Israeli experience. We usually have retirement accounts that are indexed every period. Now, if that's the case, then the whole optimization should be changed significantly. Because you optimize, the individual optimize not only to, by taking into consideration that in future periods, it will get some compensation again and again and again. Now, if I do this type of, uh, of optimization, maybe I'm going back to our old, well-known CPI. For example, if I know that if I, let's say, buy an annuity, that it's going to be indexed every period. And let's say that the interest rate is, is exactly the, the subjective discount rate, like uh, in the... In the uh, in the standard uh, equilibrium model. In that case, I'm, I'm going to get a situation that I'm going to worry about compensation only for the present prices. And I wouldn't care about future changes in future prices because they're going to be compensated by the next period uh, 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 indexation. So in that case, if that is the institutional arrangement of, a, of an indexation that is not a one-time indexation, but comes every new period, as in Israel every month, for example, then I'm going to get a situation that, uh, well, I thought first that the CPI, the standard CPI, will be enough. And then I thought maybe we should correct it a bit and, and try to not only to get the same level of utility, but also the same level of marginal utility, because that's really important for intertemporal substitution. But then I thought again and said, oh, but if you have homothetic preferences, then the what you really care about is the marginal utility of an additional dollar. It doesn't matter how you spend it, and, and then, then it's not so important. So uh, I, I'm leaving this just as a, as a question mark. I mean, what happens if you do have compensations not in a, as a one-time compensation, but on a continuous basis, and then the whole optimization differs, and, and, and then we should think about what's the right indexation for this type of, of experiment. So this is, a, a, this is the point I want to make. And that's it.